So my authors, the paper two, uh, we colloquially know this paper as. Uh, my co-authors, some of them are in the room, Jane Sandal and Petra Tenhoop Bender, and maybe some on the web link, hopefully. That would be great. I would also like to particularly acknowledge Ingrid Freiberg at this point. She's uh, from the US and the expert in the LIST, the Live Saved Tool Analysis that we've used in this paper and um, has been a terrific colleague and a huge contributor to this paper. So we were interested in taking the framework that Mary has described, the maternal and newborn ooh, <laughs> framework, and looking at, uh, if you use that, how many lives saved in a hypothetical situation? So particularly in that um, blue box that Mary showed for the framework. So what if you applied that in a country and you scaled it up, what's the implication on lives saved? And we were most interested in mothers' lives, um, in newborn deaths and, and in stillbirths. We looked at from 2010 until 2025 in five-year increments, and we looked at 78 countries, and I'll explain those in a moment. Uh, we've used the Human Development Index, and we chose that after looking at a number of other indexes, including gender equity indexes, but the HDI was the most uh, applicable for the countries we had and for the data we had. We're also interested in looking at the whole uh, system approach, so not just midwifery, but midwifery plus specialist care, because we know that we have the best services will be provided within an integrated network of care, not, not just one uh, siloed approach, but the whole system. So we're looking at the, the value of incrementally adding uh, specialist care. So the 78 countries essentially were the 58 countries from the first state of the world's midwifery report plus the additional countdown countries. Countdown has 75 countries, there's a bit of an overlap. We ended up with the 78 countries. These are high burden, low income and middle income countries accounting for almost all maternal deaths and almost all neonatal mortality. So these are really important countries. And we use the HDI index to classify countries into three groups. The lowest of the HDI, the low to medium and the, the medium or moderate levels. So remember, these are the lowest 78 countries. Um, so each of those groups had 26 countries <coughs> each, and there's a list of the country uh, in, your, um, in the paper. We then looked at in each group of country, and this data is available for each country in the web appendix if you're interested in actually tracking uh, the most specific bits of data. We generated the average mortality rates and ratios, the health, in health intervention coverage values, HIV prevalence, contraceptive prevalence, and total fertility rates to get a sense of for each of those groups what was going on in that country or in, in that uh, group. And then we applied a, a look to the baseline for each group with a hypothetical standard population of one million people using uh, UN data from 2010. And we've used the Live Save tool, which some of you will be familiar with, and um, particularly people like Joy have done a lot of work using the Live Save tool. It has strengths and it has limitations, and I'll talk about those uh, at the end. We use the interventions from the Essential Interventions Commodities Guidelines for Reproductive Maternal Newborn and Child Health, and these were originally published by the Partnership and um, were incorporated in the paper one of the series that Mary has described. These are those able to be delivered by, as part of midwifery services, particularly by midwives who are integrated into the health system, educated to international standards and regulated appropriately. And the specialist medical interventions included uh, blood transfusions and caesarean sections as uh, we see in CMONC, the Comprehensive Emergency Obstetric Care Models. We came up with a number of scenarios. The, the top one, the zero, is, is, is baseline. Um, essentially all the other scenarios are compa compared to the baseline. So while uh, ambitiously we would love just to go down to scenario number three, which is universal coverage of all interventions, that was um, being a little bit of a Pollyanna and we needed to start doing an incremental increase in coverage. So the modest scale up is a 10% increase 
each five years out to 2025. Substantial is a 25% increase. A universal coverage is from uh, assumed that by 2025, each intervention would be, receive a 95% coverage. And then we also looked at a deteriorating system or a system that uh, didn't make any improvements. So had more births, but no more staff, no more workforce, um, and was going backwards essentially. Just to kind of highlight what the, the risks of doing nothing are. So I guess this is unsurprising that uh, universal coverage re re results in lives saved, that you will save the lives of mothers and babies if the women receive the, the coverage of the interventions that we know work. So in a holistic way, not just a siloed way of each intervention, but if you add them all together in the midwifery package of care as defined in the framework, you will save lives. And even a modest uh, increase, a 10% increase each five years will make a difference. And this is a really important message, I think, for countries, that they don't have to say it's just too hard to get to 95%. Actually, a smaller difference will make a big difference. And I've given you the data there for maternal, but it's very similar for stillbirths and for neonatal deaths as well. So just for those of you who are like a graph, uh, the y-axis is the change in uh, deaths, maternal, fetal, and neonatal mortality. It's the percentage change. The x-axis are the four scenarios that I've just described. The low HDI countries are in blue. The moderate, low to moderate are in pink. And the group C, the moderate to high HDI countries, are in green. And you'll see that even with um, a modest, I don't know if this works, uh -huh, a modest increase in coverage of the interventions, there will be a substantial uh, numbers of lives saved. And this goes up as the coverage increases. This is 95%, this one is 25% every five years, and this is 10% every five years. You'll see attrition will, will um, not avert deaths. Attrition will make increase the numbers of deaths, the proportionally numbers of deaths. So then we looked at uh, the addition of specialist care, um, and this is figure two in your paper. So we looked, and this one uh, down on the y-axis, are the deaths averted or the deaths remaining? Specialist care is green. Midwifery care as defined in the framework is pink, and the deaths that are left are blue. And along the bottom are the groups. So, uh, Group A for maternal, I'm just going to show you with this. So we looked at numbers of maternal, fetal and neonatal deaths averted by midwifery plus specialist care. So this is the, the integrated model. This is the ideal model if you've got everything on board. Um, and uh, this is with no scale up even. So including family planning and excluding family planning. Family planning is a really critical part of the live saved analysis. Um, these are the maternal lives saved, stillbirths, neonatal, and down the bottom again with excluding family planning, um, maternal, stillbirths, and neonatal. And the pink bar in terms of this series is what's really important, and then the pink plus the green. So pink is midwifery care, and specialist care is green. And so for each of those groups, having this integrated package of care will make a difference, will save lives. And the added value of family planning is not to be understated. One of the problems with the list analysis is that it is about lives saved and it's very difficult in a high income country to make this make sense. And so in order to uh, incorporate high income settings, we have a panel in the paper where we've looked at midwife led care. And um, as Mary said, we've drawn heavily on Jane Sandal's review um, and also more recent papers um, that have come out since the Cochrane Review that uh, Sandal et al. did, um, Sally Tracy, who her paper was also published in The Lancet last year. And in these papers it shows that uh, midwife-led care leads to overall improvements in maternal and newborn health. Not necessarily lives saved, uh, because that's not the focus of the analysis, but all the, a whole lot of other benefits, and it is cheaper. So this is good care that actually will save health systems money and has very high levels of satisfaction from women. 
But midwife-led care can't exist in a vacuum. It has to be part of an integrated functional system with good consultation and referral mechanisms and good access to obstetric care without financial, professional or organisational barriers. So just finally, I think my six minutes is probably up, um, even modest increases in coverage can save lives. Family planning is critical and the Lancet series on family planning from last year has highlighted this as well. We need to work with specialist care. So midwives cannot do this alone. Midwifery-led care cannot do this alone. This is about an integrated system that respects and acknowledges each other's discipline, skills and contribution. There is a positive impact on preventative measures. And this is not just about interventions. It's not just about doing stuff. It is also we need to build in the sitting, the being, the supporting, the, the respectful care that is so critical to make midwifery work. One of the other issues that this paper has highlighted is that there are, um, there are challenges ahead with measuring Im improvements, that lives saved is not the only measure, that we also need to be able to measure improvements in, in women's empowerment, improvement in women's social and emotional well-being, and, and measuring respectful care is another important measure that we can't really do at the moment. And there are limitations with LIST. We've made an assumption that as coverage increases, quality increases, but that's not always the case. And so thinking about other ways of measuring the impact of quality, other ways of measuring the social and emotional care that midwifery provides, that particularly midwives provide, needs to be inbuilt into systems like LIST or, or new systems. So universal coverage will re result in lives saved. Family planning is a critical part of midwifery care. And the midwife as a health worker can efficiently and effectively deliver the package of interventions. Thank you. Thank you.